it's time for some fine clearancing. This was a first test fit with the gearbox. Look at her, there. I figured out we need more space. So let's use this fine tool and clearance it a bit. Look here, this and this is in the way of the head. Beautiful, my friend. I will paint it, but you know, later. Let's make the tunnel also. This is the hole for the shifter. This is where gearbox lifts. Now it's there. So I marked it here. This is the place where top of the gearbox interferes. So let's give it a few loft tops. Poor car. More clearancing is needed on the gearbox, so let's take one centimeter of it. explain what the hell I'm doing right now. Uh, I want to get every possible millimeter or quarter of an inch or whatever you need to use to get the engine as far as possible because that's that's performance like if it will be too, too nose heavy the car will be useless and especially with the V8 swap that's that's crucial so I'm trying to push it there uh, I found one more centimeter What's that? That's like one eighteenth of an inch or something like this, sixteenth of an inch. So yeah, actually, there is no better hammer than the engine itself. You know, the hammer has the engine slash hammer has two hundred kilos, four hundred pounds or whatever you use. So if I will wiggle it back and forth, I will. Do some harm so I will see actually the place where it hits. I think I know where it hits, but anyway. Let's do it. Cool. Let's take it over again. Look at this beauty, my friend. There's okay. much more space here now. So let's put it in again. Try to figure out how to mount the engine, actually, because there are no engine mounts on the, on the subframe. I haven't spoke properly about the engine itself. So what is it all about and why I'm putting it. So this bad boy is 3UZFE 
it's some from some Lexus uh, GS 430 which the name says it has 4.3 liters and uh, it has VVTi which makes this quite a beast uh, it makes 300 horsepower and 400 newton meters which is it should be quite a torque uh, this specific piece has only 30,000 kilometers Nicely. I'm getting better and better at this. Yeah, so it has 30,000 kilometers uh, from the inside. Uh, I will show it when I'm going to be doing the stuff with the pan. I will show it. It's like new. Like the oil has has beautiful brown color. You know, the aluminium is aluminium. There is no oil leak. Like I'm yet to have an engine without oil leak. So. Hopefully that's it, yeah. But it still uh, has 20 years, so I will do, you know, all the maintenance on it. There are three generations of this uh, Toyota V8. They were all put it into the luxurious cars uh, and and sports sedans. Uh, together with the two JZs, uh, actually they kind of make similar power with the two JZs, but this one was like more luxurious, and two JZ was like more sporty, if I understand it correctly. Oh yeah, nicely sinks in. Oh, I'm getting better and better at this. Yeah, and there are three of them: one UZ, uh, two UZ, and three UZ. Uh, this is 3UZ, this is the latest one, this is something like 2003 year or something like this. So it's actually an upgrade for this car by the time. This car is 1998. Yes, we had 1998 Miatas in Europe. 3 uz engines, they have a couple of characteristic features. Uh, usually people go for the 1UZ, which is the older one. It has the distributor and it does not have all the VVTi things but it has really fat rods so you can boost them to 500 horsepower no problem without opening the engine it's like 2JZ like you can boost them like crazy stock and they will just handle it uh, this one unfortunately has really skinny rods they were lightening and lightening rods probably for the for, for the fuel consumption but the advantage is it should be heavy but I cannot boost it, like I really cannot boost it like I checked it and there is like 30 more horsepower to gain and then a rod through the block so if I would like to boost this one, which I don't know, as I know myself, it may happen eventually. I have to take it out and just change the rods. Nothing else. That's what people do, and the rod bearings, uh, and put it back all together with the same piston rings, everything. Uh, since these engines, they can do like half a million miles or something. Uh, it's nothing like a Miata engine. Of course, in my regime, it will not handle half, half a million miles, right? Because I will be racing it a lot. But normally in a car, you can beat them and they are they should be one of the most reliable engines ever. Yeah? So, I don't know. I have also BMW and they. some people say they are reliable. I don't think this anymore. <laughs> they are awesome, but reliability, I don't know. Not after 20 years of beating. Four point three liter, four hundred and thirty newton meters in this configuration with VBT. So it should be quite something for Miata. I know about few cars in Europe like this, but it's far from common. I know one guy. I saw him once in Lithuania. He has uh, one UZ. He built it for his girlfriend, but he's he's a fabricator. I'm not a fabricator. I actually don't like angle grinder that much even though on these videos it looks like I do. But I'm getting better at putting the engine in and out. 
I should put it maybe on my CD. Also, for some reason, uh, these engines are super popular in Australia and not anywhere else, really. Uh, they put them into their Commodores and, and all this Australian stuff nobody else has. Uh, I actually watched recently the video from the Skid Factory, how they rebuild it. And it's kind of scary. But on the other hand, it looks like the Miata engine, which I rebuilt a few times already. It's just two of them. <laughs> they are like, looks like the lifters are the same, and looks like the VBTI solenoids are the same. Yeah, and there are a few other similarities, and the head design is kind of similar, but not really. So, yeah, I don't know. But this one it should be like for a few seasons without touching it. So that's the whole reason why I'm doing it. I want a reliable car, I'm tired of rebuilding Miata engines, so I said like, fuck it, let's do this and then I can concentrate on my driving. I'm trying to get every centimeter, millimeter, inch, knot, and feet, whatever is your unit. To get it as far as back as possible because that's that's performance like you know Lamborghini knows why they put the engines in the middle of the cars would be cool to have a transaxle like Corvette but I don't think that's really feasible I will be just happy if I will be able to fit a steering crank So the question, why to go with the hard way to put it in the Miata? Well, I always wanted V8 car, like just the sound of that is amazing. Uh, but this is not the land of bald eagles. Uh, the LSs are not growing on the trees here. Like, I was really looking for some time to get some LS from a Hummer. Uh, these are the only cars already here, uh, which are cheap with the LSs, no way. Uh, they are disappearing immediately because with the hammer engine, with the cam, it, it's probably possible to get somewhere. But no, I haven't found any, and it's it's a uh, cast iron block anyway, which is certainly not suitable for Miata. So aluminium engine, you know, LS. There is nothing like this. So there is only really this one, or there is the BMW V8, which is super unreliable. It has the issue on, on the cylinder walls, they get stripped by the uh, by the rings and you have to rebuild them all the fucking time and yeah, and they are actually bigger, they won't fit. This engine is some, for some reason, it's small even though it's big, it's 4.3, it's, it's, it's the same size as the BMW one, maybe it's because of the poor stroke ratio, who knows. Yeah, yeah there's one more cool thing, there are actually Japanese writing on this. This is from the JDM car from, from Japan. This was not really driving much here in Europe. The car came here and was taken apart by my friend. Okay, the engine is in and it's really now the, it is the heads on the firewall. Uh, time to start thinking about the, about the engine mounts and the gearbox mount. I bought this since I saw Al from Skid Factory using this tool actually makes sense. So now I will be able to measure pinion angle and the angle of the all the stuff so I know the car is flat 0.5 degrees off and I will try to get the engine like under 5 degrees like this we'll see whether I succeed or not uh, but for sure I will be able to do the same thing with the rear end you know so there's some reasonable pinion angle I'm not going to kill the drive shafts yeah, which is going to be also fun, drive shafts here, like yeah, in the land of both eagles, uh, you can easily buy, you can go to drive shop, shop and tell them, okay, I want that, I want that and that and put it together, I will have 500 horsepower, bam, one week, you have it. Here, like if I'm calling someone, okay, can you make me custom? No. Can you make me custom? No. I found one guy who can do the axles, which I will not need in the end. 
I haven't found yet anybody like who's good with the drive shafts. Because the BMW has two pieces and I have E36 rear end and E39 gearbox. So there is different size of, a, of it and they've got the Guivo and they, have, they are connecting into each other uh, by the splines and there are different splines. So this is going to be a mess. I will have probably like four different drive shafts to make one, like at least they are cheap here because the beamers are everywhere here. But yeah, so this is going to be fun. I'm really glad we have one thing close here and uh, that's the PMC Motorsport. Uh, I got the plate from them and I also have this clutch kit. They got two, they've got some super light aluminium stuff which is expensive. My, my friend had this prepared for this engine, so I said like, why not? This one, it really goes to the UZ engine, to the BMW diesel gearbox. Yeah, this is the strongest gearbox known. And it's all with the, you know, stuff. And I actually have one special thing to show you for that. So this is a special clutch I custom ordered. I hope it's the right one. At least there is some company here in Czech Republic which does custom motorsport stuff. They call it Renovac. They do friction material, so we do brakes and clutches. And I saw it also somewhere in the UK for sale, but not this one. So this is some high quality friction material and all of them, there are no springs. I think it's the, the, the stock design, unfortunately. So this is the high quality, it's not normal organic, but it's some better. And on the other side, ceramic stuff on this one. So, see? One side, other side. Yeah, okay, I specifically asked them, uh, put and it does not fit. This was not cheap. This is gonna be one of the things which will not fit. Take two with the clutch. So I saw that fiasco. I bought the cheapest clutch, which should be still pretty good. It's, it's look for the 530D. The issue is, which I realized while buying the second clutch is, there are no springs in it, like no springs. So everything is fixed. Flywheel is fixed, clutch is fixed. Only rubber thing is the Weibo or the, the rubber thing, hard spoiler in Czech, uh, which connects, you know, the gearbox to the drive shaft. So this is only flexible thing there, and everything else is fixed. So I figure out ceramic clutch at all. Uh, let's take the cheapest clutch because the clutch actually limits the torque and that this clutch should be able to handle that amount of a torque Which my engine produces so let's not make it complicated and if I want to too much torque the clutch will slip and I will not break expensive things So the logic is like this here is the look clutch okay. This is the clutch, this is the replacement for the BMW, the cheapest one, yeah, the right size, and now will it actually fit? This, this, yes. Yeah, this clutch will work. Success.